Let's jump over to our man Teddy Kegstad, folks. You can reach Teddy every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. He talks to us about Forex. He talks to us about some commodities. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. We got a lot to talk about today in front of this Fed meeting next week. I like it, man. It seems like every week, Teddy, man, we got some big action going on, whether it's crude, whether it's currencies. Uh, and of course, with the Fed action going on, we got interest rates, 10 year yield sitting at about 1.5%. Um, I'm not sure if you were listening in the last segment, just talking about Bill Dudley out there with an opinion piece making the case that they might be having to hike a little bit case uh, faster than the market might be anticipating. It'd be interesting, uh, we got a CPI number coming out Friday, mm -hmm. a Fed meeting as you said next week. Uh, go ahead, where are we gonna start, man? Okay, well how about we do a little run around the world. I got some price targets and things for you guys and then we'll, we'll break it down for you after that. How about I love that, it, okay? let's do it. Perfect. All right, so starting out, Euro US dollar, okay. For those of you who follow my site, we stream, you know, videos and also signals. We had the Euro US dollar just hit this morning, the 113.11 target. Now that's a key little area now. We're coming off a higher move low, swing low. So there's a good chance that the Euro right now is in a nice little corrective phase and it's gonna make a run for that last major swing high around 113.80. I think that's about all you're gonna see right now. I think that between now and next Wednesday, you're gonna see a lot of divergence between the currencies versus the dollar. So a little strength in the Euro, weakness in the pound, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, okay. 11438, I think, is your up extreme for any rally in the euro US dollar up until next Wednesday. Okay, because nice. we'll get to it, we'll wrap it up when I when after I finish this, okay? I'm US dollar with Swiss the charts. Perfect. It's totally it. choppy. It's a choppy mess unless you're already in it. I would work a position, otherwise I would look to buy dips. I think that that's your best opportunity, but it's it's a nightmare until things get under control until next week, okay? Now, unless there's a big rally in oil and a big sell-off in the interest rates, then I would say get become a buyer for sure. But otherwise, stay out of that one for until you get a valid signal. British pound US dollar is weak right now. It's it just made a lower move low today while the euro is higher. Yeah. So that's why the, that's why the dollar index right now you are not going to be able to use that as a good guide until after next Wednesday. You got the two strong currencies going the other way, you know what I mean? So yes. the pound it's a grinding bear. I would use caution if I would, if you're short, I keep your stops tight. If you're looking to buy, I'd wait for a valid signal because don't try and catch a falling knife right now. There's a lot of geopolitical things that are also weighing on, on the UK. Now let's get to our favorite one to talk about, the US dollar, Japanese yen, um, which I'm long actually and have been for a long time. You all know that one. Uh, 116 is back on the target right now with the oil where it's at, interest rates are coming off the Omicron, blah, blah, you know, scare. I think that you're going to see like a balloon underwater rally with the U.S. dollar again over the next uh, week or so. And that's regardless of what goes on with the Fed going into next week. OK, Australian dollar, okay. U.S. dollar. Nice little lift right now, getting a nice little bounce. I'd be cautious being a bull. I think it's an upside correction right now, especially with the strength in oil. But we all know what's going on in Australia. It's not yeah. good for global economy, okay? New Zealand dollar, US dollar, which tends to go along with the Australian when it's kind of just in a free float, is had a nice little three inside up buy signal. It's a high probable Japanese candlestick pattern, which you can learn about in my book if you read it. <laughs> I like those candlesticks, up. perfect. And it, but it has a good upside target of about 0.6849. I think that's where you're going to run into some heavy um, selling, but it could still get up to 0.69 even. I think that's about the extreme for a correction in the New Zealand dollar, U.S. dollar. So one more, and then we'll get into the, the back backbones and stuff. U.S. dollar Canada to bring us back to North America is back on the skids. Remember, it's in an overall bear market. It's been in an upside correction for the past like four months bobbling around, I would use caution being a bull with that market right now, especially with interest rates going the way they're going and oil going the way that it's going. It's going to be a tug of war with that currency. Right now, I have a downside target of $1.2549 with $1.2470 being a very easy extreme sell-off target in the short run. So, um, and that's where I see things right now with these signals and with those the direction that I just gave you. That's a lot of divergence. Like I said, we had the euro that's strong against the dollar, pounds weak, Swiss is in nowheresville. So Europe is, in a, is a mixed bag of goods. The same thing is with Asia. You have the dollar strong against the yen, dollars weak against Australia, which right now you would think, how is that possible? But that's what just what is going on in the markets right now. Sure.
I love the wrap-up, man. You do a great job of walking us around that whole globe. Um, now, crude, we have to talk about, if we can, real quick. Uh, yes. Quite the volatility. I, I was looking at waiting for you to come on today, and I said, where were we last week when we talked? Um, crazy action. When you just even back it up to last week, we are at about 68 mm -hmm. bucks. We <clears> trade <throat> down to 72, and we got a, uh, excuse me, 62, and then we get a 73 right. handle. Um, <laughs> You know, we I, I we kind of know where you've been on this one, but mm -hmm. what do you look for in crude right now at seventy-two dollars in the near term, even if you're talking about a hundred dollars in the longer term? <laughs> oh, I think it's going to hold. I absolutely think it's going to hold. I, I don't see oil. I think what we had over the holidays was that little Omicron sell-off. Remember, yeah. remember when we talked on Wednesday two weeks ago when I was out in Arkansas? I said, "Be careful of holiday markets. They're thin. The algos will kick in and drive it crazy." I think we had that's what happened with the oil market on, on that Friday when it collapsed. You know, I mean, yeah. we had a ten dollar ten dollar break in oil with no news in the world that would substantiate having that happen. You know, so and it took a, last week to kind of absorb that correction, and it's got to bounce. I mean, now it's like a balloon underwater. I don't think that oil has any way of getting suppressed right now, especially like I look at how the the, the prices at the pump have been. They're they're only going up in the midst of having that big break. And I was traveling I through know. the Midwest. You know, so if the, if the gas prices aren't taking a dent and they're going to make high or they're going up, that just is an indicator right there. Yeah, I, I have to tell you because the people in my house, right, I was telling them, hey, crude, crude just went down a lot. You know, the gas might go down. Mm -hmm. This is right before Thanksgiving. And uh, and they were saying, well, I always like to buy gas right before the holidays because they never go down. I said, you're not listening to me. All right. Crude's going <laughs> down. It's going to go down. And and mm -hmm. guess what? I, w I was not right on that one, Teddy, because they never went down, man. Even with crude going to 62 right. bucks. I, I agree. Right. I was kind of I just kind of threw up my hands and said, hey, what do you want me to say? I know they're not lowering the prices, but uh, right. yeah, higher prices for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and then so. Could we real quick, Teddy, with the with the Fed, where do you see the sure. Fed next week with what's going on? We got about a minute left. Sure. Well, you know what? The Fed a, a week ago finally said, oh, inflation is not going Oof. away. Something know, we've been right? talking about for the whole year, you know, and there always is a lag with their speak. It's just like a used car salesman or a real estate agent. The market is always fantastic. It's never bad, you know. Yes. So right. now they cannot deny it. And now they have to pull the trigger because since you're no longer in denial, what are you going to do? You can't do what you've been doing now beforehand when you said inflation wasn't a problem, it's normal, oh, it's just a spike. Now you say that inflation isn't going anywhere, which means that it is here and it's staying, but well, what are you going to do? You know, so I think that they're going to probably, you know, the tapering is on the table. And as far as I agree with, the, with your uh, the, the person from the last uh, segment that, yeah, there's a really good chance of them starting to raise earlier than uh, later, I think, for sure. And I, I just think, you know, whether we know it's going to happen or not, man, it's not priced in when the market's sitting at all time no. highs. We've got inflation soaring no. and the Fed chairman's telling us, hey, we were wrong. Right. Inflation's here, man. Teddy, right. we they appreciate the, the trigger. I listen. I, I look forward to talking to you next week, man. We'll find out. Thanks, Thanks Teddy. Have a great week, Thank man. You, man. We'll talk to you next week. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back.